In the previous video lecture, we analyzed RL circuits. So we made some introduction of first order uh, circuits in electrical systems. Now we will analyze RL circuits. So the main difference is instead of capacitor, we have an inductor and everything is technically safe. Okay, so let's get this simple circuit, which is an inductor and resistor, nothing else. Okay, so at t is equal to zero, it's given that inductor current is I zero. It's a, just a uh, capacitance value. No. Uh, current value and the goal is finding i t okay that's it so what we do so let's assume that i is in this direction okay and due to the passive sign convention uh, v l and v r is written in this form and let's uh, apply uh, Kirchhoff flows and analyze circuit we know that v l is equal to v r no, VL plus VR is equal to zero. Okay, that's it. It's good. So what is VL? VL is L times DI over DT. Okay, so I is the inductor and resistor current and VR is equal to I times R is equal to zero. Okay, so DI over DT plus R divided by L, I is equal to zero. If you look at the characteristic equation, lambda is equal to minus r divided by l. So i t is equal to c times e to the power minus r divided by l t. Okay, I know that this is equal to c times e to the power minus t divided by tau. So what is time constant is equal to l divided by r for an RL circuit. Okay, so l is the inductance, r is the equivalent resistance. In this case, it's a simple R. Okay, so if we solve the initial condition, we will simply see that I of T is equal to I0, which is the initial condition of the inductor current, times the exponential e to power minus T tau or e to power minus R divided by L times T. Okay, so it's very similar uh, with respect to capacitor uh, RLC RC circuit. Uh, the only difference is time constant. Okay, so in one case it's R times C. Okay, so is equal to RC for RC circuit. Now it's equal to L divided by R. Okay, good. So let's analyze. Uh, okay, let's look at the result. So if we uh, draw the uh, graph uh, over time, we will see that it has a uh, simple exponential decaying uh, function form. Okay, so if we look at the time constant from different perspective, if you draw a line which is tangent to the curve at t is equal to zero. And if you project it to the uh, technical x-axis, you will see that this is equal to the time constant. So time constant really defines the qualitative uh, or also quantitative uh, shape of the form. Okay, so it's the most important part uh, for a first order circuit. Good. Okay, so we have a slightly different example. As you can see, we have a switch. Okay, so it says that at uh, when t is less than zero, okay, in the past, okay, the switch is in closed condition and circuit had reached its dead state condition. So when t is equal to zero minus, the circuit is under at rest conditions, okay? Uh, and we already solved uh, an example on that respect. And at t is equal to zero, we open the switch and we need to compute i naught, which is the uh, technical inductor current over time. Okay, so what we need to do is first we need to analyze when t is less than zero and t is technically is equal to zero minus. So we need to do that to compute the initial condition on the inductance. Then we will do the same thing that we did in the previous example, which is here. Okay, good. So let's uh, start with that. So uh, when a circuit is in steady state conditions, uh, inductor acts like a short circuit. Okay. And we know the switch is in closed condition. The only thing that we need to do is analyze the simple circuit and compute I naught. Okay, how we do that? Uh, let's find the equivalent resistance. Our equivalent is equal to four times. So, okay, this is uh, four ohm and eight ohm. Four times eight divided by four plus eight. It's equal to four plus, I guess, what's that? It is eight divided by three. Okay, so 20 divided by 3. Okay, so we computed our equivalent. Okay, what is the current in this direction, I source? I source is equal to 24 times 3 divided by 20 ohm. Okay, we computed I source. Okay, so these are two parallel circuits. So uh, technically, uh, 
this is equal to i source okay so divide by three times two and this is equal to i source divided by three because uh, since uh, resistance low it's like two uh, this is two times the other one so more current will go in this path less current will go in this path this is a simple current divider so i naught is equal to okay so 24 times 3 divided by 20 divided by 1 over 3 and it is simply equal to 1.2 amps okay so we know that i0 0 is equal to 1.2 amps okay that's good so we already computed that now we need to go to the next step compute the time constant okay so uh, what we do is we already computed the i0 I0 is equal to 1.2 amps. We open the switch. Technically, we ignore this part. We just ignore this part. Okay. So we have an inductor and two resistors in uh, series condition. So our equivalent is equal to 12 ohm. That's good. So what is tau time constant? It's equal to L divided by R and it is equal to 4 divided by 12 seconds so tau is equal to one over three seconds let's check if it's correct or not it should be yes it's correct okay good so tau is equal to uh, one over three seconds we compute i naught so technically i zero is equal to 1.2 amps to the power e to power i c of times tau tau is equal to one over three so i zero is equal to 1.2 amps times e to the power minus 3t. Okay, so let's get the result. As you can see, it's correct. So it actually, if you carefully analyze the first order circuit, it's not that hard from what we already did in the previous parts of the lecture. Okay, so you only need to be careful about the like steady state conditions, what's happening in the switch, how you need to compute the time constant, and other kind of uh, important details. Okay, good. Now, okay, so a little harder example, okay, uh, that's good. So we have an RL circuit, it's an inductor, but we have a dependent source. Okay, so what you can do is there are a couple of different ways of solving this. One way of solving this problem is just analyzing the circuit, okay, use the differential equation of the inductor like LDI or DT and try to figure out the time constant, that's uh, perfectly fine and not very hard. The other way is technically find equivalent resistance between two, two terminals, okay? Uh, and then since we know the uh, inductance value, time constant is very easy, right? Okay, so let's do that. Okay, what we do is, if you remember, since we have a dependent source, okay, we cannot easily uh, compute equivalent resistance using series and parallel rules. What we do is we uh, connect a source and let's connect a current source, okay, which is equal to, for example, one amp. Okay, that's good. So I think it's relatively easy to do that. Okay, this is one amp and we know that Vx is equal to one volt, right? Okay, it's one volt. So this is equal to two volts. That's good. I already know that it's two volts. Now it's acts like an independent source. So it's we know that it's dependent, but because of that, it acts like an independent source. Okay, so what we can do is uh, we can apply a mesh current analysis technique, for example, to uh, analyze the circuit. Okay, that's good. So we know that this is one amp. Okay, and let's call it I. Okay, so we need to write a mesh equation for the first mesh. So it is equal to minus two volts plus uh, two I minus one, okay. Oh, and that's okay, plus six I is equal to zero. That's good. Okay, so I'm okay, we are going somewhere. So it is eight I is equal to, okay, two plus two, so I is equal to one over two amps. That's great. Okay, so I know that I is equal to one over two amps. Okay, there's 
uh, no problem with that. So I already computed I. So what should I do is I need to compute the voltage here. Okay, that's it. I just I need to compute the voltage. So what I can do is I can write a, a KVL for this mesh to compute the voltage. Okay, so Vs. Okay, and let's uh, assume that this is here. This is Vs. Okay, that's good. Uh, minus. Okay, so let's call it minus Vs plus. Okay, one. This is one volt. Already know that. Okay. Uh, so what is the current here? Plus two. Okay, this is equal to one minus one over two. Okay, so this is two volts. It is dropping, so it is two is equal to zero. Okay, so Vs is equal to one plus two minus one plus two. Okay, that's good. So Vs is equal to four volts. Okay, so Vs is four volts. We know the current source. So equivalent resistance is equal to simply four ohm. Okay, so I know the equivalent resistance. Okay, so do we have space? Okay, so I'll know that our equivalent is equal to four ohms. Okay, I know that L is equal to two H, two Henry. So tau is equal to L divided by four, which is equal to uh, one over two seconds, I guess. Okay, let's check the result. I hope it's correct. It's correct. Okay, as you can see, what we did is almost the same thing that we did when we are analyzing Tevening equilibrium and Northern equilibrium of a circuit. Since it's a uh, single uh, energy storage element circuit, we kind of isolate it and analyze the remaining part of the circuit to compute the equivalent resistance. We know the time constant. If you know the initial condition of the inductor, it is simply equal to I0 e to the power minus t, okay, 2t, technically. That's it. Amps. Okay, so if you know the inductor current, you can compute Vx and any other variable in the circuit.